Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. You can see my backy patch behind me. I'm busy tearing down the, the enclosure around it. Most of the tobacco is picked. There are still a few leaves on one or two plants that I will harvest at some point, but most of it is done. This video, we will focus on the kiln. I meant to get it up and running sooner, but um, COVID struck. I didn't have the energy to get it up and running. Uh, a lot of testing has to be done to make sure that it holds its temperature before I can commit my precious tobacco to it. So, let's get into the video. Okay, the plywood shelf is in. As you can see, I have wrapped it up in aluminium foil. It's not glued on, it's just wrapped around and sort of pressed down. And the reason for this is the wood will get damp, the temperatures will get quite high in here, and you don't want the resin or glue between the layers of plywood leaching out and tainting your tobacco. So kilns built out of plywood is a no-no. Uh, this is just a small piece I'm using for a shelf, but I've wrapped it up in foil just to make sure. Get off there. No, 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 get off, get off. Yes, any kind of box like object is intensely interesting for a cat. Okay, fine, get on there. Test it out. You like? She likes. Uh, there's a cat in my kiln. Are you done? Toto, are you done? Are you done, little kitsy witsy? Okay, it is Sunday night. I'm busy going through my leaves. And I'm testing my kiln. I've got it up and running. It's all wired up. It's going. And there seems to be a bit of a temperature difference between what the dial says and what the actual temperature is. But that's fine, as long as I just know where it is. So the temperature I'm aiming for here, it says in the dial 58, but in actuality it will be 48. There's a 10, 10 degree difference for some reason or other. And we're almost at at 48, it's on 47.1. And let's just check on this old school style thermometer. Yes, that is very accurate. Obviously it starts falling immediately as I open the door, but the correlation between the old, uh, don't get on there, no. The old, uh, what do you really call this, analog, physical, as in not digital, physical, no, not right. Um, but yeah, old school thermometer, that's what I didn't have last time, but the correlation between that and the digital is absolutely spot on, so I have faith in this one that it is correct, whatever it says in there is absolutely spot on, and that's good. So I'm going to test this a little bit more. I've got the cup pot, oh, sorry cat. Uh, it's in there, I've got the lid off, resting on the shelf nicely, it's doing its thing. So basically, I'm just making sure that whatever temperature it gives me holds steady, that it actually regulates. So the temperature that I'm going to be wanting for fermenting my leaves is around 50 degrees Celsius. And it must not go above 53. 53 apparently is the cutoff point where you could start killing off the enzymes for the process and obviously the fermentation will stop dead. And that's what we don't want. So I'm going to err on the side of caution and keep it around the 50 mark and not go above that. And uh, I'd rather the process take longer than me kill off the enzymes by accident. 
So, yes, with further testing, if the temperatures hold steady where I set it, and I'm happy, then I will start bunging in those leaves. Oh, exciting stuff. Monday morning, and it's a public holiday here in South Africa, and I spoke too soon about my hygrometer. Uh, but a moisture did get in there. I could see the display was getting very, very faint. So now I just need to figure out where, where it got in. And I think this insulation stuff along the side, I think it somehow gets in there, possibly through the hole that I drilled through the top for a vent. And it kind of, or even just sort of through these seams. And it just kind of soaked its way through there and got in here. So, I have to got the batteries, and I'm just letting it dry out, and I'm going to seal it up somehow, seal this up with a bit of silicon around there, and then jam it in there again. Because that needs to work, it really needs to work, I need to know exactly what the temperature is. Um, so, this is not, it's not uh, happening as, as quickly as I would like. I can foresee that I will be testing right through this week to make sure that this thing is absolutely stable before I start hanging my tobacco in there. So, we're not out of the woods yet. Anywho, I'll get back to you guys later. I need to figure out a few things first. Okay, I'm putting some heat onto this unit so I can dry it out properly and then figure out how I'm going to seal it up. And I'll put in some new batteries. Those old batteries got wet, so... When in doubt, put in some brand spanking new batteries, seal it all up, and it should be good for the kilning season. Man, it's very hard to find incandescent light bulbs. I've got about two remaining, two of this large size, and it's from an old spotlight. Um, and these days we are replacing everything with LEDs, and this is one of the old-fashioned incandescent heavy-duty spotlight light bulbs. So it puts out a ton of heat. After about 20 minutes this thing will be too hot to touch. Oop. Come on. Stay where you are. Alright. I won't give it too long, just long enough to get most of the moisture out of there and then we'll seal it up this is insane the amount of suckers and secondary growth that's popping up on these plants I mean I pretty much harvested all the tobacco and it just keeps on coming I'm not gonna harvest any more leaves of this no matter how big these little suckers become I'm impressed with the thickness of these stalks. Yeah, I've still got a couple of plants that need harvesting at some point. I just need to keep on ripping off these suckers so that the leaves can just, you know, get as big and tasty as possible. But I've been slacking off trying to get my kiln up and running. And these guys are just going nuts. And of course the biggest monster is this one at the back. This Habano 2000. I uh, grabbed a few suckers off here. This down here is about slightly higher than waist height. It's about the height of my belly button. And that's where I harvested the seeds from. I cut them off and they're drying in the garage. And of course this was a sucker believe it or not. It's shot out the side and I left it and it's gone up and up and up and this is this is this, this is level with my face and this is another sucker that shot out the side there. I almost snapped it off now not realizing how high it's gotten. Look at that. If I stretch up and reach up as high as I can it's, it's gotten up to that high. That is high. Um, so I'm going to rip off some of the secondary growth, some of the suckers. But I may as well, may 
may as well just pick these leaves eventually as well and put them to the kiln one day. They won't be particularly big, but these are all at the top of the plant, so whatever sun they catch, maybe I should draw a line somewhere. Because these guys are taking energy away from these leaves, and these leaves are bigger. It's a nice lihero. I don't know, should I snap it off here? And again, I don't want these leaves going to waste. Should I just snap it off the top here? You know what, let's just snap it off the top. All right. So whatever comes of these, I will harvest them. And this, I mean, it's, the leaves are not very big. It's kind of not worth the effort. But yeah, I mean, this, these plants are completely stripped of anything harvestable and they just keep pushing as long as there's sunshine. And they just keep at it. Tobacco is like a weed, man. But this monster at the back has really impressed me. Let me see if I can put up a, a picture on this video for comparison. But you remember way back, day eight, <laughs> my tobacco is looking great. So, day eight. And the backy is looking great. It rhymes, day eight, and the backy is looking great. I've marked them very carefully. I know which is which. <sighs> yes, the cat wants attention. How tiny those plants were, and how massive this magic bean stalk has grown. I mean, that is that is a thick stalk. That is impressive. Yes, you can play with the old battery. And I've figured out which one it is that I need. You see that one? It says on the LR44. This one too. Here is my row of LR44. LR44. Mine is, says it too. Yes. Yay. I'm so glad I got this massive multi-pack. It's just been so useful. There are a couple of things that needed batteries replacing. It's good to get a, a mix of I'm, batteries. Hang on. Cool. Are they coming to my house and get my surprise? Yes, I'm just letting the viewers know how pleased I am with buying this massive multi. Okay, bye. bye. Good news! It looks like this hygrometer slash temperature meter has recovered. That's looking good. Yes, indeed. So, change of plan. I'm not going to have it mounted on the side anymore. It's just too risky. I slathered a whole lot of silicon in there and I covered this thing with silicon and I shoved it in there. And then afterwards, I thought, you know what? Let's not take a chance anymore. It's just going to sit up here. The cable with the probe will go in there to measure the temperature and we'll keep this unit out of harm's way. So, that's how we will proceed. Let's do some further testing and see if the temperatures hold steady. Okay, I'm getting really excited now. Everything is coming together nicely. This little fella has recovered well, and the temperature is corresponding very nicely with this one on the inside. So, I have absolute faith in that one, that everything is as it says. And it's now holding a temperature pretty constant between about 49 and 52 degrees Celsius, which is ideal. I've got slow cooker on low, and it cycles on and off as needed. I've just put in this little USB fan, um, just to circulate the air around and make sure that the heat is evenly spread throughout. I've angled it slightly upwards and towards the doors, so and when the door is closed, it will kind of make like a little vortex on the inside and just spread all the heat evenly. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close the door. Keep an eye on it. And I'm hoping that tonight,
scraps so I can start putting my backy in there. If not tonight, then tomorrow. As long as nothing strange and unforeseen comes up. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I'm just wrapping up the tobacco in bundles, labeling them, just trussing them up lightly together in little bundles, and they will dangle from this bit of string. It'll be quite impossible to hang every single leaf up individually. Some of these stalks are not really suitable for the kind of handling, and also it's just far too finicky, so. Bundles it'll be. And I've made sure to label them so we know what is what. Very important. So what I'm doing while I'm making the, the little bundles is I'm sandwiching the smaller leaves in between larger leaves so it all gets clamped together. And it's important that the tobacco not be crispy dry. So you need to get it into case before handling. Uh, in my case, they've been stored kind of slightly ever so slightly, not damp, but kind of soft to the touch. Yeah, slight traces of mold creeping in here and there, but luckily the kilning process, uh, the temperature will be high enough that the mold will not be able to spread. In fact, I hope it gets killed. It's probably not possible. Mold spores are everywhere. And I just rearrange the leaves. Make sure all the stalks are at one end and that the leaf points are pointing down when the bundle goes in. It doesn't really make much difference, I'd imagine. It just makes it easier to make a sort of uniform bundle. So that's why I'm doing it like that. There we go, that's a Bono 2000. And I'll make that into a nice, nice, neat bundle. There we go, the backy is in the kiln. I just have to make sure that the bundles, that the leaf does not touch the sides of the kiln. That's why they're all clumped kind of in the middle. All right, we're good to go. And now we wait very, very patiently. Oh, six weeks. Oh, I don't know if I can wait that long. But I'm gonna have to. What choice do I have? We've come this far. It's just the final hurdle to go. Precious. There we go. The backy is in the kiln. A very long six weeks of fermenting lies ahead. Man, I have to be super duper patient. Um, yeah, well, it's just the case of keeping an eye on the temperature, filling up the crock pot every now and then with hot water from the tap. Uh, cold water is not a good idea. It brings the temperature down very suddenly, causing the crock pot to fight to get the temperature back up again. What's that cat doing? Oi! Also, if your crock pot is running dry and you add a whole lot of cold water, you run the risk of cracking it. So hot water from the tap is the way I'm going to go. Um, that way the temperature doesn't take too much of a dip each time because it dips anyway every time I open the door. So, so there we go. Our fingers crossed, toes crossed that everything goes swimmingly and after six months hopefully I'll have some delightful fragrant tobacco that can be smoked. Oh, it's going to be so good. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please like and subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video.